was one thing Riker loved, besides the sexual favours of green cadets. It was piloting shuttlecraft. Riker would use any excuse to do so. Data to Captain. It was several seconds before Riker answered. Riker here. Sir, I am sorry to disturb you. While Commander LaForge was working on the holodeck, he received a message of a problem with the outer hull of the port nacelle. I believe a repair team should take a shuttle and investigate. OK, Data. I'll be right there. Data now distinctly heard Troy groan with dismay. Prepare a shuttle launch in Bay 3. Oh yes, he had prepared a shuttle all right. He had instructed the shuttle's computer to jam the door, so Riker would spend extra trying time to open it. By that time, it would be too late. Data counted the seconds until Riker would walk through the door. Data, I'm really not feeling up to the shuttle trip. Why don't you team out yourself? and report back. Data was shocked, but managed to strangled. Yes, sir. He hurried to the computer terminal and tried to override the subroutine he had covertly programmed, but he could not. He had, it seemed, written the subroutine too well. Only a few seconds were left now before the force field would fail and the bay would be decompressed. He hurried towards the exit but the doors opened before they should have. Hi, Data, the captain called me and said something about hull damage on the... The force field on the bay dock failed. Air howled out of the doors, sweeping Geordie and Data with it. The howling wind was gone. It was quiet here. However, when Data saw Geordie 201 metres away, he knew his friend would not be so lucky. It was supposed to be Riker. It was supposed to be Riker. Data's mind was still repeating this thought like a mantra when he filmed himself being beamed up. Next time Data noticed anything, he was in engineering. What has happened? And where is Geordie? Barkley seemed at loss for words. Ah, uh, Commander. Are you feeling better? Odd. I have forgotten how to perform a self-diagnostic. I do not believe I am fit for duty. Then he remembered where Geordie was. And all Barclay's questions were ignored. Some time later, Data looked over to see Riker conferring with the engineers. Very good, Mr. Barclay. I think you've done all you can for Data. We have to find what happened in the shuttle bay. I can't help but think about what happened to the Yamato. Riker to all personnel. In accordance with Regulation 96A, any dangerous or unstable ships must be either shut down the warp core or leave the space dock. We will leave the space dock immediately. Yellow alert. Riker to first officer, report to main engineering. Helm, request authorization to leave space dock. Proceed as soon as possible. Shortly, Deanna had entered the room. Deanna? I'm sorry to ask you to do this, but we don't have a ship's counsellor assigned as yet, and the engineers can't seem to help Data. I'd like you to give it a try. Hello, Data. I know you're feeling lost and in shock. We all are. I know you're wondering where Geordie is. Do you remember? He is dead! I killed him! Oh, Data, of course you didn't. Why don't we go to my quarters? <laughs> we have come to full opposition of the space dock, sir. Thank you, Ensign. Hold this orbit. Why don't you tell me what's troubling you, Data? Data felt as if he had done this before. But his memory functions were now so unreliable, he could not be sure. For some reason, however, he started to feel aroused. 
conceal in his trousers. He gave a small twist, detaching the offending body part. He threw it against the wall. I should have done that long ago, is the source of all my problems. Diana couldn't believe her eyes. Of course she knew data could be disassembled, but to have such a graphic view of the event was more than she wanted to see. Um, data, I don't quite understand. I think you need to talk about it. Then he noticed the horny feeling had not gone away. Somehow the sensors were still sending messages to his brain, even though it was coming from nowhere. He knew there could be only one end to his suffering now. Diana could not help him. Well, maybe she could help him temporarily. Before Diana knew what hit her, she was on the floor. She could feel an intense pleasure from his mind, which almost overwhelmed her own acute fear. Knowing she did not have long, she called for help the only way she could, by screaming from her mind. Imzadi! Riker looked around the bridge, knowing he should be doing something instructive, but unable to decide what to do first. Then he sensed a thought deep in his mind. Imzadi! He jumped up in shock. Computer, location, Deanna Troy. Deanna Troy is in her quarters. Is there anyone else in Commander Troy's quarters? Lieutenant Commander Data. Then he knew it was Data all along. He did all of it. It only made sense. Security team to Deanna Troy's quarters on the double. Disable Commander Data. Set phases to kill. Data could not believe this was happening. He did not need any sexual organs. After all, just the knowledge that Troy was dying was enough to bring him off. He was still reliving the after effects when the security team burst through the door. The first one leveled a phaser at him. After that, he did not see. He woke on a hard bunk in the brig. Oddly. Someone had reattached his sexual organs. Data rose and walked to the edge of the force field where two guards were stationed, both of them young and well built. On the shapely hip of the nearest one hung what Data wanted. A phaser! He could reach through the field for 0 0.08 seconds. Not enough time to grab it. She would have to come nearer. Data unsealed the trousers of his uniform and began massaging his cock. As he stroked it more and it elongated to unbelievable height, the god came more and more fascinated. She inched closer, closer. Even the male god could not stop staring. Data had mesmerised. Data struck out like a snake, grabbing the phaser E up to the dial to full power and blasted away a whole portion of the wall. Then to pick off the armed guard while he was at it. Before the vapour had dissipated, Data had also killed the other guard. He took a nanosecond to fasten his clothing and left the cell. As he neared the big door, it opened to reveal Captain Riker. Data, what are you? The rush Data got from toasting him was just icing on the cake. Running a bit farther down the corridor, he almost crashed into Dr. Pulaski, who was waiting by a turbo lift. Without hesitation, he pushed her right through the closed doors, letting her plummet to the bottom of the turbo shaft. Then they to storm to the nearest airlock with only a small hesitation to say goodbye for his life. He blasted the outer door. Now he rotated to see the local star in all its majesty. And he knew that was where he was headed. It was not long before his visual senses burned out in the glorious hallucination of stars, comets, and multicolored nebulae. Now, only his most deeply buried senses told him of the sun's heat and the acceleration he was undergoing. 
A giddy sense of vertigo made him open his mouth in a soundless laugh. His body was close to its maximum operating temperature. Closer. Closer. <laughs> Dr. Salar was sitting at the table of Starbase 173 with Lieutenant Porter and Nurse Ogawa. We had to remove Commander Troy from life support this morning. Without enough oxygen, her brain apparently couldn't stand the emotional overload from data. It looks like the Enterprise is almost spaceworthy again. I suppose once they assign some more senior officers, we'll be heading off. I'm your new captain. Not Wesley.